Do you want to know how to make Among Us in Unity? Then look no further cause I've got you covered. If you haven't seen the previous episode, it should be popping up right now. Also for convenience I've created a playlist that might help you to go through each step. Don't forget to subscribe to be updated with the latest episode when that comes out. A short recap from the previous episode, we looked into how to create simple art for our games, how to implement some movement for the player, how to create the camera follow and also how to integrate Photon to create a multiplayer game. There were some observations from the community, by the way I appreciate all your feedback, I will be mentioning them right now. Cyber Angel, walls do not need rigid bodies to work. Thanks for that, I actually tried it and that's the case. So be sure to remove the rigid bodies from the walls and it should work the same. Glitchy Demon Fairy regarding the missing rigid body on the player. It's actually is, is there but it's not at the same time. So be sure to add the rigid body to the player if you haven't already. Thank you so much for your feedback and as always I welcome it from all of you. And speaking about the community, we recently reached 100 people in redefined community. So for this I want to create a special episode to celebrate this milestone. So hit the notification bell to make sure that you are notified when that comes next. I'm Adrian and welcome to Redefine Game Dev, the place that is focused on finding success in game development. Before diving into actual how-to, I want also to mention the fact that all of the code will be provided in articles on Medium. They are posted delayed one week, so for this week we have the previous video. While reading the Medium article, don't forget to give a clap, it will be appreciated. Let's move on to the video. This video is divided into two parts. In the first part, we will discuss how to create three simple tasks. The first one being the key code, the second one being how to create the swipe card, and lastly, we will see how to wire up different wires that have been broken. In the second part, we will discuss how to create a multiplayer killing machine. Uh, basically enable players to kill each other uh, on demand. There will be some advanced concepts of multiplayer coming up in the following videos. As I was editing the video, I realized that the footage from the tutorials was getting too big for one video. This is why I took the decision to split this episode into three separate parts, with the second and the third part coming soon as well. Also, I've added all the scripts at the end of this video, so if you are missing something, you can check there to see everything is in the right place. So let's get started with the puzzles. And for the puzzles, I've created a simple test scene, separated from the other one, which is called puzzle test scene. Now let's start with the gameplay, insert the code functionality. First, we need to adjust the camera from screen space overlay to screen space camera. This will allow us to properly integrate all the functionalities that are needed. Since we, we will be using Unity's UI for the player tasks, I went ahead and created the canvas. The canvas will allow us to create different UI elements inside it. Also, I locked the view to 2D mode to simplify the UI work. Now, let's create a child to the canvas called keypad task. I will add an image component just to make it more visible on the screen. For the numbers, we will need another children game object. This time we will use the grid layout which arranges all of the children in a grid way. Now to populate the grid we will create some predefined buttons, set them up and parent them to the numbers game object. Notice that by resizing the numbers object, the objects inside are automatically positioned correctly. I will use the same process to create a field to display the code that has been inputted by the player. I will fast forward through this adjusting part. Now let's get started with the code. I created a script called keypad task. 
the first two fields that we are going to use here are storing the code from the input as well as from the card labels. For customization purposes, I added the code length. It can be customized via inspector to be any length desired. The code reset time is the delay after the final input is still being displayed. Instead of using start function for initialization, I opted for onEnable. Start is executed only once when the object is created, while onEnable is executed every time when the game object is enabled. Let's generate a new pin code. For this, I use the simple for loop that goes from 0 to the maximum code length. For each value, it generates a random number from 1 to 9. We will display the code in the card field by assigning it. The player input code is set to empty initially. The next function that we are going to implement is going to be called by the UI buttons in the Unity's UI system. Depending on which button is pressed, the number changes and creates a new code in input code. If the length is reached and the code matches or not, the final answer will be displayed in the input code space. The coroutine reset code is used to keep the message until the delay that we previously specified runs out. To prevent unwanted inputs from the player while the reset is being displayed, we will use is resetting to true and then set it up to false once it's finished. Now we just need to attach the keypad script to the keypad task game object. To avoid confusion, we will name the inputs properly. And with drag and drop, we will attach those input fields to the keypad script. For the buttons, we need to call on the function created in the keypad task. We can select all of them, add a new event for on click, and reference the keypad task script. From there, point to the button click function. Now, for each individual button, we need to specify the parameter. Let's test it. The first two inputs will be failures, while the last one works. The numbers will be randomly generated each time you run this. Let's make the keypad task a prefab by drag and dropping it from the hierarchy to the project. And finally, we will disable it since we have finished it. Now let's move on to the swipe the card functionality. Let's now create the card swipe game object. What you have to be aware at this step is the draw order for each element. To detect the card swipe, we will create multiple points and check their collision with the card as the card moves through them. If it's done in the proper order, it will be a success, if not, it will be a failure. Also, all the swipe points will get the box collider 2D and we will have to set that as a trigger. For the card, we also need a box collider 2D and we have to adjust the collision shape. 
For the car to detect the collisions, we need to add also a rigid body, but it's only for the car. For this task, we will use more scripts. Let's look at the swipe point, which will be added to every swipe point in the scene. Let's now set up a reference to the swipe task, which we will get in the awake function. The swipe task will be created at a later stage. The only action here that needs to be implemented is on trigger enter 2D, which is called if this object gets hit by another trigger object. We need to send back this as a method to the swipe task. Let's now move to the swipe task itself. We will store the swipe points in a list. If the player stops the sequence, there will be a countdown which when finished the task will be failed. The current swipe point index is the current position where the card is. In update function called each frame, we can decrease the countdown by a little. This will decrease the timer for us. If the countdown reaches zero and the player started the swiping sequence without finishing it, it will be registered as a failure. Moving on to the swipe point trigger, a function called by each swipe point, we check if the current swipe point is the one needed. If that's true, then the index is properly increased. If we reach the final swipe point, it means that the player finished the task successfully. Lastly, we will create the swipe card script. This will be attached to the card and will enable the card to be moved around via mouse. To have the drag functionality in Unity, we need to extend the iDrag handler interface. And then of course we need to implement it. We will also need the canvas reference for the next step. Now continuing by implementing the iDrag handler interface on drag, here we need to calculate the position with the help of rect transform utility and set it up correctly to the card. This might seem complex, but it actually just takes a screen point and translates that point to a point that is in the game. Now we just need to apply the computed position to the actual position of the card. Now we need to set up the scene elements and the first one is the swipe point and all the swipe points will get the swipe point script attached.
the card will also get its proper script as well as for the task itself. Now, to add all the swipe points to the swipe task, there is a little secret. We can lock the inspector down by hitting the small lock top right. After this, we can select all the swipe points and drag and drop them on top of the swipe point list. This will initialize all the swipe points in one operation. Don't forget to turn the lock off, otherwise the inspector will be stuck onto the swipe point task. As I'm running this simulation, it seems that it works as you can see in the debug line. Now that you have the swipe points in place, we can disable the image to make it look nicer. As for the final touch, it would be nice that instead of showing the debug line, we can actually create the lights turn on and off depending on the input. These are simple game objects that we just need to trigger on and off based off the events. Since we want to keep this on a couple of seconds, we will create a coroutine called finish task and its role is to enable the correct object and also keep it up for a couple of seconds or whatever time you input in. Lastly, we need to replace the debug logs with the calls to that function that we just implemented. Don't forget to add the references for the newly created objects to the swipe task. Now let's put it to the test. And as you can see, either the red or the green light turns on depending on the outcome of the task. And lastly, we will make this a prefab as well by just dragging and dropping it into the project section. As mentioned before, these are all the scripts that are used in this tutorial. Be sure to check the other two parts of this tutorial that will be available in the upcoming week.